This podcast is brought to you by our friends at Anchor by Spotify. And if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No specialty training or equipment needed. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast worldwide on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, like I've been saying, Anchor is totally free. It's free. Download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started and make your podcast dreams a reality. That's anchor.fm. What are you waiting for? Download the app. Well, it's a big show. Welcome to the Fade Route. It's a big bad show tonight. With DNZ. Here are your hosts. DNZ. Welcome everybody to this week's episode of the Fade Route with DNZ. I am Z and we have a great show for you today. We're talking NBA draft fallout. We're talking... Aaron Judge's new $19 million contract just for this year, and Regional Commissioner of Austin AYSO, Rita Sanchez, joins us to talk not only Austin AYSO youth soccer, but also NYCFC. But we're going to start with the pending free agency period that is starting in the NBA. Things are expensive exploding right now you have players opting out of their deals you have players opting into their deals you have players who are opting in in hopes to get out of their situation you know Bradley Beal is out James Harden is out but he's trying to stay in uh Bobby Bobby Portis is out uh this is getting very very confusing actually when you're looking at it, right? Because now you have the market is flooded with these huge names. And you had a monster trade today as well as the Atlanta Hawks acquired guard DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs. Murray, who was an all-star this past year, averaging 21 and a half points per game. The Spurs got three first round picks and the rotting corpse of Danilo Gallinari for Murray so that they can pair him with Trey Young and add a little bit more firepower to their already young and hungry roster. But let's start with the big guns, right? Kyrie Irving, as always, we were going to talk about him, right? He's a lightning rod. Kyrie Irving is, is opting in to his $36 million contract with the Brooklyn Nets. Russell Westbrook is also opting in to his $47 million contract. I'm still wrapping my mind around that with the Los Angeles Lakers. And then last but not least, John Wall is opting out of his contract with the, well, he's opting in to get bought out, if that makes any sense, because he has agreed in principle to join the Clippers. So now you have Wall, you have Kawhi, and you have Paul George. So, what's the biggest surprise from this week? All of this, which one is the, which one's going to be the biggest impact? I don't know. And frankly, I'm looking to find out. And here he is. I've known this guy since our days on Carousel Shoes. Flight crew through and through. The last QB in St. John's history. What's up, D? How's it going, man? Who hey, is the I'm- biggest surprise for you? I mean, the biggest surprise is how terribly run the NBA is. I mean, 
we were talking about this in the production meeting, and I really do feel like the NBA is the poorest run league out of the four major sports. And I think hockey just might be the best run league. I mean, you got a, you got teams foaming at the mouth right now for Jalen Brunson. And our listeners probably just went, who? Yeah, <laughs> the backup guard, or he actually was the starting guard for a while on Dallas this past season, who has got about four years in the league, who's averaging 12 points a game, four assists a game, and shoots less than 50% from the field. Not from three, but from the field, mm. is, is, is a hot commodity that the Knicks are dumping salary for and the Miami Heat are dumping salary for and Dallas is hoping desperately to keep him. Bizarre stuff. But to talk about the three guys you just mentioned, I mean, listen, the first time we talked about this, I was like, man, biggest surprise is Kyrie, but it's really not because John Wall is going to the Clippers. The Rockets basically paid him not to play last season Mm -hmm. and they were prepared to play pay him to not play this season either he gets hurt a lot and i'm not sure what he has left but on the flip side i really thought boston or miami should have gotten in the mix for john wall just because they're missing a guy right and i'm interested to see how he's going to play with the clippers i mean he should be well rested he hasn't played that much in the last five years and he's a tall guard who can get up and down the floor. And he's the, the rap on him a lot of times is he get hurt a lot. And he's a lot faster than everybody else. He almost moves too fast. The Kyrie Irving thing didn't, you know, he didn't have much of a choice. I love this quote, though. Normal people keep the world going. But those who dare to be different lead us in tomorrow. Kyrie, if you were different, you would have opted out and took $6 million to go play with the Lakers. I think everybody on the face of the planet would have opted in to playing with Kevin Durant for 30 plus million dollars a year in Brooklyn. So dude, you may think you're different, but you're not that different in this situation. A different person would have went to play somewhere else or opted in to play with the Lakers for six mil. And then the Westbrook, I mean, Westbrook didn't have a choice, man. Like who's paying that? Who's gonna pay him? He, you know, his game has deteriorated so bad the last couple of years. I love how guys sign these huge contracts. But they don't stay wherever they get them from because nobody wants them anymore. So if I'm going to go with anything, I'm going with John Wall. That was the biggest surprise to me. It is. Well, Westbrook kind of can't go anywhere just because you need to, in any trade scenario, you need to be able to, you need to pay him. You need to have cap room and you need to be sending comparable salary. How many people are you going to (laughs) send to the Lakers to make that work. And then they have to cut all of them because you you don't have an infinite number of roster spaces. So it's friggin' ridiculous to me, for one, that such a contract was even allowed to happen, right? $47 million, 47. Kyrie Irving, it was a no brainer, right? Like at this point, he's getting paid not to play, right? He just is doing what he's doing. His feet have not been held to the fire since he put pen to paper in Brooklyn. And why wouldn't he opt in to try and get a trade, right? Well, why can't, why wouldn't he try and better his position? Because if he opted out and tested the market, owners talk, right? Owners have eyes. They see these things. He's not getting a dime. Like I'm not saying collusion and blackball, but I'm saying collusion and blackball. Like, <laughs> he, like he, he would never, never set foot in an arena again, let alone sign a contract. I don't care how good you are. You cannot do these things. You cannot do routinely what Kyrie has done, right? He's burned bridges in every single market that he's touched. And he's kind of he kind of has no choice. He has no choice in the matter. But then the the head scratcher is John Wall, right? John Wall agrees to this buyout. And you pair him with Paul George, you pair him with Kawhi Leonard, on paper it's great, but can you guarantee me that John Wall is going to play a third of the games? Like 
I'm not asking for half. I'm asking for like a third. I'm asking for, you know, maybe 30 games. Can you, can you give me 30? I don't know if John Wall can. And, you know, when he's on the court, fine. You know, his, his stats are good. He averages 19, four and nine, right? 40, 43% from field goal. Uh, free throw is not great. You know, percent it, shit too, right? it's terrible. Yeah. But he's definitely more of a facilitator, right? You know, so I, I mean, it's listen, in, the NBA it's salary, intriguing, you know, yeah, the NBA salary cap is going up to roughly $123 million. You're asking for John Wall, Russell Westbrook and Kyrie Irving on any team. They're a third of the salary for the whole freaking team. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's where the Lakers are in trouble right now because the Lakers can't keep Davis, LeBron, and Westbrook. That ties up the entirety of their cap. So, like, thankfully, the cap is going up. So they actually can feel the roster. That'd be nice. You know, otherwise it'd be like, you got $99 in a job, you can go play for the Los Angeles Lakers. It would be fantastic. But, you know, I find it very interesting and I find it very surprising that teams would be so willing to offer John Wall this contract. I understand that he was out for the year. I understand that, you know, they Kemba Walkered him earlier than the next Kemba Walker, Kemba Walker. But, you know, I don't know what he has left. And this is going to be a very intriguing season just from looking at these three point guards. But now that Kyrie's opted in, right, where do the Nets go from here? So NBA analysts think this saga is far from over. And frankly, I mean, how could it be? Opting in just means Kyrie loses his leverage. And now that... The Nets are seemingly in the driver's seat. Are Durant and Kyrie effectively on the trade block? I mean, I think teams like Dallas, Portland, Miami, and the Lakers would be interested in either player, right? Uh, a one-year deal for Kyrie means nothing. I mean, you think he's going to you, you you think does Brooklyn really believe that he's gonna play hurt this year? <laughs> you think he's he's not gonna take time off just because? And you know the other thing was is I was watching um, Kevin Durant do an interview with David Letterman. I mean he's a, he's an interesting dude. He's just an interesting guy. He's he's much different than I thought him to be. And he said he doesn't chase rings. He chases experiences. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Like the Golden State Warriors winning two championships with them was an experience. I bet this season without Kyrie and without James Harden was an experience too. Mm-hmm. But if I'm the Brooklyn Nets, I'm like, this isn't going to work. This is just not going to work. Like We didn't win last year with these two guys. I, I, and you cannot bank on Kyrie playing. The problem is, is I don't think there's, there's not really much of a market out there for Kyrie. Um or at least teams are pretending there isn't. Um, I think Dallas would be interested in him because I think Mark, I think guys like Mark Cuban and guys like Pat Riley, they think they can control him. They think they can talk to him like Danny Ainge and, and you know, everybody else who, who or LeBron and Ty Lu. They all think that they can talk to this dude. Kevin Durant is 32, 33 years old, I think. I mean, how much more time does he really have left? And we already know that he can't get it done without two other guys, right? Yep. Are we banking on... So So if you're the Nets, right? You're banking on Kyrie Irving giving you a season where he's only, he's, he's a player playing on a one-year contract. I mean, we all know what that means. It doesn't show faith in the player, right? And what player is really going to do that? Kevin Durant is 33 years old. What has he got left? Really? two two really good years left probably seven years in total but two at the top of his game years left i mean i'm a guy that's shopping i'm shopping him and i want draft picks just like sam presti and oklahoma city thunder did all those all those years ago i want draft picks i want capital because listen they're not going to beat the heat they're not going to beat the bucks and man 
the talk is is that James Harden opted out, but he's going to take a reduced salary so the Sixers can get better. Maybe in the Sixers either. Nope. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the Eastern Conference just from the simple fact that, you know, the Boston Celtics are going to change too, right? They're most likely going to lose Marcus Smart. Al Horford's not going to be back there next year. Like, you can't... Robert Williams, Grant, what I understand that, but I Tatum and Brown are just okay. Like they need more. Um, the Nets, the Nets have so much egg on their face, it is unbelievable, right? But we kind of knew, right? People who are who understand the dynamics of these personalities knew that this would never work. Right? We saw this coming from a mile away that it was not going to work. But try as they might, they not they doubled down with the James Harden trade, right? The first one. Now they 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 released, they let go a little bit by dealing Harden for Simmons, but at the end of the day, Ben Simmons still can't shoot. But you're, he's he's a defensive wizard. Yes. Absolutely. But he's a one-dimensional player. That team is horribly flawed. It's not as good as the team you had that you blew up in order to go star hunting, right? You had Jared Allen. You had Rody Kuruz. You had Karis LeVert. You had Spencer Dinwiddie. You had a core nucleus of players that were talented, right? Solid, unspectacular, but together they were moving in the right direction. You're paying for what Durant has done. You're not going to pay for what Durant will do for you. You might get an MVP out of him out of pure spite, right? He, he will take it to the next level just despite everybody who thinks that he is done, right? We, we know that Kevin Durant is thin-skinned. We know that Kevin Durant has rabbit ears. He probably has his burner Twitter keyed in on our Twitter page at FadeRapTNZ. <laughs> but you gotta, if you are the Nets, admit defeat, shop Durant, shop Kyrie, fire Nash, and you might want to consider firing Sean Marks too. Because he was at the helm, right? He was leading, supposedly. He was supposedly at the head of the ship when this went down. So you need to start thinking about the future of this team. And this team will only get better when one or both of these guys are gone. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know, we all got on James Harden for leaving. But if you think about it, he probably was, he's, he was the smartest one in the room. Mm -hmm. Because he looked around and he was like, Man, this Kyrie thing is a mess. Kevin Durant out here chasing experiences. I'm just trying to win a championship. What, what does that mean? Skydiving? <laughs> like, what does that, you know, what does that mean? Chasing experiences. I mean, today, Woj had a, an interview on Get Up. And he said it will take a cultural reset for Kyrie Irving to succeed with the Nets. What does that mean? Does that mean kowtow and kissing Kyrie Irving's ass? Or does that mean fire marks, fire Nash? And, re and build from the beginning. Like, what does that mean? A cultural to me, reset. To me, it meant that they want him to be accountable. They want him to play in games. They want him to play hurt. They don't want to hear about his, you know, his personal things. They don't want to hear about Ramadan. They don't want to, they don't want to hear about uh, COVID vaccine shots. They don't want to hear about your issues with, you know, any social issues you have. They want you to come in here and play basketball. And I'm not sure they're asking, they're not asking for so much for a guy who they're paying $36 million. Um, and the fact that he's coming on, he's coming in on a one-year deal, that should really, really worry everybody. Do you love brownies? Of course you love brownies. But you know what's better than a brownie? A delicious, handcrafted, gourmet brownie delivered right to your doorstep. That's what our guys at Sweet Life Brownie Co. offer. Chef Tommy D and the crew offer a dozen delicious delights that you will crave. From the classic OB, to Dutch Apple, to Campfire S'mores, and many more. 
Check out their website, sweetlifebrownieco.com, for their Friday brownie drops. At noon, their site goes live, and you see what they're making. Since you're there, become a site member and earn points. You earn 50 points just by signing up. Make sure you follow them on Instagram and Facebook, too, at sweetlifebrownie underscore co for the latest updates and their latest releases and creations. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com. Give them a call, 845-641-3043, and tell them D&Z sent you. That's sweetlifebrownieco.com, 845-641-3043. Sweet Life Brownie Co., because there's always room for a brownie. You know, at one time, the Cleveland Cavaliers took a chance on Kyrie Irving through the draft, and the NBA draft was last week. It's over. There were a few surprises in that first round. So, Z, tell me, who got better, who got worse? Honestly, a lot of these kids are thoroughly mediocre, so it's definitely <laughs> it's difficult to say. <laughs> they're thoroughly but mediocre. They're thoroughly mediocre. A lot they're of thorough one- at being mediocre. I love it. <laughs> exactly. A lot of one and dones. It's hard to assess one and dones, right? You definitely you need to have a body of work. And your body of work shouldn't include high school, you know? Like, it's one thing if they were coming straight out of high school. If this was, like, a Tracy McGrady or a Kevin Garnett who never stepped foot in college. Like, these kids have played one year of college ball, plus you had the COVID pandemic kind of influencing their college and high school experience, if we want to talk about experiences, KD, you know, to the point where, like, realistically, as an educator, they're about two years behind. So if they're a freshman in college, more or less they're a junior in high school. It's very risky. It is very risky. And and I said that Ben Caro was the most complete player, in my opinion. He went number one to, to Orlando. We'll see what he becomes. Like, he's... He's definitely going to, he's going to have every opportunity to prove that he belongs in this league. Chet Holmgren, he is skinny. I'm not going to (laughs) lie. He is a thin, thin man. And if he's going to be down low, right? And he's going to have to be down low because you're seven feet tall. They're going to play you at the five. You're going to get banged around by the likes of Rudy Gobert. Right? You're going to get banged around by Robert Williams. You're going to get banged around by Giannis when he drives in. Is this kid going to be able to handle that? I don't know. And then, you know, you get to the Knicks. Right? To me, the Knicks stole the show. As per usual. Can you explain what the hell the Knicks were doing? I mean, I, I understand the Kemba, the Kemba Walker deal, right? Kind of. Kind of. I, I kind of understand it from the standpoint that, okay, I want to get out from under his salary, and I found a team dumb enough to take it. The Pistons. The Pistons also took Nerlens Noel and Alec Burks off of them because the Knicks want to go dump a hundred something million dollars at the feet of Jalen Brunson. I just obviously. His father t- is a coach and ex agent is the GM. Correct. They like, obviously Taylor's thinking, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. <laughs> But the Knicks did a lot of fancy footwork, a lot of maneuvering, and honestly, it's it's really, really too hard to say that anybody's really gotten better. But you know, we'll, the the kids will get their shot, and the one I mean, Ben Caro's going to get a long look. Jabari Smith is going to get a long look. Keegan Murray is going to get... They all stink. All these teams stink, so they have nothing but time. Nobody that is looking to do anything in the near future got as much of the impact player, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I look at it, and I I believe in Sam Presti. I believe in him as a GM, and I love what he did. I mean... They wanted to take. Uh, they wanted to take your your boy Pablo, uh, Paulo Banchero, number one. The Magic wanted to take him. He's like, all right, man, I'm taking Chet Holmgren, a seven foot, a seven foot guy who could dribble, shoot, 
He's young, and he's had and Sam Presti's had experience with seven foot athletic players. He drafted Kevin Durant, right? Or he had Kevin Durant on his team. Uh, so I love how then they went and got this guy. Uh, what's his name? Let me get his name right here. Uh, uh, uh. Usamain Deng, who's like six ten forward, mm-hmm. and he's monst- He's monstrous. He's versatile. I mean, he's not. He's he's a raw scorer, but he's deep. He's a defensive player. And then they went and got Jalen Williams, a knockdown shooter from Santa Clara. I like what he's doing. A team I think really I didn't like their moves at all. I wasn't a fan of what Portland did. I, I don't. You go and you draft Shaden Sharp, a kid who didn't play at all last year as a freshman, didn't play at all, and you you draft him over Johnny Davis, the Wisconsin guard who's six four, a scorer who could help Dame Lillard and Lillard out. I don't like drafting guys that haven't played. Like we see what happened with Kyrie Irving, he really didn't. Like he didn't play his senior season. I mean, his first year at Duke much. Zion Williamson is yet to really get on the court. Um, you know, it's the NBA draft is really a crapshoot. I was looking this up. I was looking over a list of the last ten number one overall picks, and it's fifty fifty, right? Mm-hmm. Like Anthony Davis, great player. Anthony Bennett out of the league. Andrew Wiggins bounced around, just won a championship. Canadian, by the way. Good player. Carl Anthony Towns, good player. Ben Simmons, ugh. Mark Foots, ugh. DeAndre Ayton, he's about to get traded. It didn't really work out for him in Phoenix. I mean, he's good. Is he number one overall pick good? Zion Williamson, meh. Anthony Edwards turned out to be a good player. Kate Cunningham's okay, and we'll see what happens to Paolo Banchero. So you're really just rolling the dice. It's 50 50. It's a flip of a coin. Uh, but, you know, I believe in building through the draft, as weird as it sounds. And look at Golden State. Clay, Steph, and uh, uh, um, Green all mm-hmm. through the draft. And then you go get Wiggins. They still have James Wiseman, who didn't even help them win this championship, but he's on their team. James Wiseman is done. He, they are, they are going to move on from him. But think, about, think about what they could get for him, right? He's a number, at the end of the day, he's still number one pick. You're still going to have to give a number one pick or you're going to have to give some some valuable player to get him. So I just saying like Sam Presti went and drafted three players and I'm guaranteeing that in the next, I'd say next two to three years, they're going to be formidable. I just can't get over the fact that Chet Holmgren, right, is seven feet tall and 195 pounds. Get this kid on a fucking weight a weight plan right now, like I've you know those Oklahoma linemen. I think it was uh, the guy who put the scrambled eggs and the pancakes and the pound and uh, you know the protein bar, like all of that stuff in a blender and drank it to bulk up. That's what this kid is gonna need to do because 195 pounds at seven feet tall. I mean, Greg Oden was brittle, but he was bigger than him. Right, Greg Oden had the body. That... Yeah, but he wasn't as he wasn't as athletic, though. I mean, if you're talking about athletic seven footers, we're talking about really Kevin Durant is is the next guy up there. Dirk is is a good shooter, but he's not as athletic. Like, you know, Dwight Howard was a big dude. You know, at seven feet tall, but he wasn't athletic. Like Chet is athletic. I mean, you're right. He's gonna get bodied, but. Look at Giannis. Look at when Giannis came in the league. He wasn't he wasn't as bulky and as big as he is now. He's a monster now. Imagine if Chet puts that kind of weight on him. He needs to put like 30 pounds on over the summer for him to be viable. Or he's just going to get the crap knocked out of him. You can't help but smile when you see a balloon. The simplest occasion is a party. Westchester Pop Stars, located in New Rochelle, New York, offers balloon styling and decor for all life's events. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, showers, school and corporate events, store openings, or just because. Westchester Pop Stars takes balloons and shapes them into works of art, creating decorative installations for your special occasions. No event is too big or too small, and their custom 
personalization service is top notch. Westchester Pop Stars is a private studio quickly expanding. In person consultation is by appointment only. Send an email to westchesterpopstars at gmail.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. No need to hire an event stylist. All you need is balloons. Currently servicing Westchester, Putnam, New York City, and Connecticut. To find Westchester Pop Stars, search for them on Instagram, Facebook, or Google. And speaking of getting the crap knocked out of them, we had the showdown in the Bronx between the Houston Astros and the New York Yankees. And it resulted in a split. Fine. You can't say it was boring, right? The walk-off home run, the no-hitter on Saturday, Verlander not pitching, but he is shining in Queens today as he went eight and my Mets lost to the Astros and got swept. But he at, he is a sub-3 ERA right now. And he's nine and three. Ten and so, three. Good with the win he, today. He didn't get the win though. Oh, he, he didn't. Know he, he he didn't get the win. He was out. I, I'm pretty sure he was out. But what is the most impressive thing to you? What's the biggest story coming out of this? The Aaron Judge walk off, the no hit, or you know walking on Aaron Judge walking off twice and getting paid. Like what <laughs> what what is the what is the What is the biggest story coming out of this clash of titans? Well, I think it was important for the Astros to come into New York and win the series or split the series, right? They came in here and said, you know what? We don't care that you're the best team in the league. We don't care that you're playing home. We're the Houston Astros. Um, I was super impressed with the no-hitter, especially since this was the second time they did this to the Yankees, the second time they did a combined no-hitter in Yankee Stadium to the Yankees. But to me, the, the biggest story was Verlander coming out of the series, 9-3, and three, with the ERA under, or basically under 3. I mean, this is a guy who's re, who, who is, you know, one year removed from Tommy John surgery. He went into Yankee Stadium, and he only gave up one run to the best team in baseball. I mean, come on, that's got to speak for something. Based on what we what we know about Justin Verlander, like it's the he had the most impressive story. Thirty nine years old, coming back from injury, nine and three with a two point two two ERA. Two point two two. Can I interest you in that? Absolutely, you can. And we thought that the Yankees were going to be in on Verlander. And yeah, it was, it was very surprised. Very surprised yeah. that that was not the case, because he has been nothing short of dominant, and he looks like the Justin Verlander of old, and not an old Justin Verlander. From the Yankees' side, you know, you definitely need to be encouraged by Aaron Judge's performance. He continues to be the MVP of the American League. Like he is crushing it. And smashing the ball like the Aaron Judge of old. Yeah, tw- you're looking at 289, 28, 57 ribbies. I mean, you'd like to see more ribbies, but you really can't do anything about that. You know, you're, you're only presented with so many uh, runners in scoring position or runners on base because Aaron Judge hits leadoff sometimes. Can I interest you in that? 6'7, 282. You know, we grew up on Ricky Henderson. And now, screw it. Aaron Judge. Yeah, exactly. Just let it bat first. Screw it. You're just like, fuck this. <laughs> just hit it out. You're in scoring position already. But it, to me, like, it's a good round one. And these teams seem destined to meet in the American League Championship Series with the winner going on to the World Series. This seems like a crash course, right? It seems like this is destiny. The Yankees getting no hit by Christian Javier is troublesome. And not not to take anything away from Christian Javier because he's actually he's quite a good pitcher. But 
for your bats to go ice cold for 16 innings. Not just one full game, a game and a half. You went a game and a half without a hit. That is disturbing. You need to be able to do what you're doing, right? You're the Bronx Bombers. You're bashing the shit out of it. I happened to go to the Yankee game last night with my girl for our anniversary. We watched them bash the shit out of the Oakland A. But, right, clearly. But that's the Oakland A's. They're the worst team in baseball. You should be doing that. This is concerning if you cannot do it against good pitching. If you can't muster a hit against good pitching, that is very worrisome. And you need to change up your approach. We've said it multiple times. And the personnel is there this year, right? You got rid, you cut rid of, cut some of the dead weight. This is the personnel for it. Now, could you get rid of Joey Gallo? Absolutely. Like, I mean, by the end of the game, like Joey Gallo was trolling. He was trolling fans. They were begging. You know how after the warm-up throws, just to get his arms loose, they, they start lobbing the ball into the stands? I, in, I was in section 107 with my girl. I have people lobbying, begging Joey Gallo for this ball. And he's just casually tossing it to every other section. And I'm just laughing my ass off. He's trolling. Like, Joey Gallo is openly trolling Yankee fans. It's hilarious. It's wonderful. So they definitely need to, they need to kind of cut loose some more dead weight and really kind of tighten the belt here. Because if you get no hit for a game and a half in the playoffs, you're going home. You are going home. In other news, the Yankees avoided arbitration with Aaron Judge, paying him $19 million, And the deal includes incentives for an MVP, a World Series MVP. But what would be worse for the Yankees? Losing Judge to the Mets? Losing Judge to the Giants? Losing out on an Otani? Or losing out on Juan Soto? They already lost out on Otani once. Shohei Otani is never coming to the New York Yankees. I hate to break it to you, everybody. Shohei Otani is never coming to the Yankees. If he leaves the Angels, he's going to end up with the Dodgers, the Mariners, or back in Japan. You don't think he could possibly go to the Mets? Nope. <laughs> nope. Not even close. I think that he was very adamant about what he wanted his first go around. He didn't want big market. He went to Anaheim. Remember, he did not go to LA. He went to Anaheim. The Angels do not play in LA. So, I think that he likes being the big fish in a small pond. I just thought he liked Disney World. I mean, it's possible. <laughs> they have one of those in Japan too, right? They still have that? They got an Epcot Center? Something like that? <laughs> Tru- TV Truck Master? I don't know. But, that, Shohei Otani is never going to be again. Juan Soto, Juan Soto is possible. Juan Soto definitely is possible. But that's going to take a hell of a lot of money and a hell of a lot of years. And you can't pay both of them, right? Right, exactly. You can't pay both both of them and pay Giancarlo Stanton. So that becomes a, a, a quizzical issue. And this is the same organization that let Derek Jeter get to free agency. Now, I know what you're going to say. But yes, Derek Jeter... Derek Jeter was the last homegrown superstar the Yankees had. Who did it? Oh, natural. Sorry, Robbie. But they will, they'll let him, they'll let him walk. They will let Aaron Judge walk. Because they demonstrated that they've been willing to do it in the past. And if you're a Yankee fan, this should bother you. Do you think they have more leverage if they win a World Series or if they don't win a World Series? I think there's enough of a track record that they can say, we've gone as far as we can with you via con Dios. Like, I think that they, I think that there is enough there, especially if they go up against the Astros again and lose. Like that just may, that just might be in the mind of Steinbrenner, in the mind of Cashman. Like this is as far, this is his ceiling. This is as far as we can go. And that's not necessarily fair to Aaron Judge. 
because more often than not, he's performing. It's the other guys that you need to worry about. But well, I just look at the situation in the way that I think the Yankees hold all the cards, regardless of how this year turns out, regardless of how he plays. It doesn't matter, right? Because if they win the World Series, they can be like, all right, we won the World Series. We're good. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're going to, you know, get better with uh, Juan Soto, who we, we have no problem giving 10, 12, or 13 years to because of how young he is and how super talented he is. Or, you know, Shohei Otani, who's a two-way player, and they keep talking, mentioning his name in the same breath as Babe Ruth. The, on the flip side, they can say, well, if we lose the World Series and don't get there, they'll say, man, we didn't win with you. So why are we going to give you more money on the back end of your life in Major League Baseball and think it's going to get better? Like, you know, so to me, to me, the Yankees, the Yankees hold all the cards. In the short term, I would say losing Judge to the Mets would be a disaster for the Yankees. I think that's what they really don't want. And I feel like the Mets, this owner, this has no shame and no problem showing out big bucks and giving out years to really stick it to the Yankees on this one, right? But then in the short term, I think it would be re-signing Judge and not being able to get Juan Soto because I think Juan Soto is the guy that everybody's going to be clamming for, you know, in over the in the next two years. Where Judge, Judge reminds me of like a pool host, like. Uh, a general manager and owner is going to be like, yeah, give him everything he wants. Bring him here. Just just to say they landed like the best player in Major League Baseball, like like Pujols was or like Mike Trout was, whether you're in Detroit, San Francisco, or, 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 um, or even Chicago, even the Chicago Cubs. Right? So that that's my two cents. The worst thing that the Yankees could do is not build is not build in certain opt outs bingo yeah you're he's 31 he's going to be 31 years old at the time of his at the time of this contract he wants 9 years he wants 8 9 years then you need to meet us halfway we'll give you what you want we'll opt give you an opt out after six. opt out after 3 opt out oh. after 6 oh. we'll give you two opt outs so i cuz if i'm the yankees and i've seen Right, I've seen this happening with with A Rod. Yep. Like they, they've experienced this with A Rod. Right. Like I did not protect myself, and then I got screwed on the back end. So the Yankees and Judge should get into a room. I don't want to leave. You don't want me to leave. Let's come up with a scenario where both of us are happy. Now you can they, still they, and they let Robinson Cano go. Yeah, and, and look what happened to Robinson Cano. Right. So, you know, like no one player is bigger than the New York Yankees, but this is the same organization that did let Derek Jeter test the waters. And then if the deal was a little too rich for their blood, they would have let him walk. And I think he had a deal or was at least talking to the Tigers. So Derek Jeter was at least talking about it. Now, Judge, Judge is a little, the Jeter was longer in the tooth. Judge is going to be younger than Jeter was when he tested free agency. If he's blown away by an offer and he goes back to the Yankees with that offer, I think, I think both sides would come to their senses. It's Are kind of like when, when Bernie when Bernie Williams was on, was a free agent, he went to the Red Sox, went back to the Yankees, said, "I have an offer from the Boston Red Sox. How much more do you want?" <laughs> okay, Who? you got it. <laughs> Are you a, are you in the camp of like you know pay these guys whatever if it means he's the best player in baseball or the best first baseman in baseball or the best hitter in baseball? Are you of the mindset of like you know you pay the pay the best to be the best or are you more of the mindset of like no it's a horrible deal to go ten years? It's a horrible deal to go ten. To, well, perfect example: Bryce Harper, thirteen years, no opt out. No trade clause. That's a horrible deal for the Philadelphia Phillies. So one, who do they want up? He wasn't going back to the Nationals. But who? who they kept him out of the Mets uniform? Oh, okay. Great. Wonderful. You're going to have to swallow that contract now. 
like Manny Machado with the Padres. Why are you giving drunken sailor money? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, I understand if you're going to do that, like you mentioned Steve Cohen. Steve Cohen backed up the truck for Max Scherzer on a short-term deal. He didn't give him 10 years at age 39. He's not crazy. He's not crazy. He went, he said, okay, we're going to take short-term on you. I'm going to get Mate. I'm going to get Kenna. And I'm going to get Escobar. And those three, like, not-so-sexy signings are what keeps or they're keeping the Mets afloat right now like they're they keep them at a steady level and look at Max Scherzer the shiny new toy he's on the IL right now so you go big game hunting but buyer beware that's all I'm saying all I'm saying buyer beware We love youth sports. Not only do they get the kids out and active, but they promote teamwork, sportsmanship, friendship, and fair play. One of the Fade Route's favorite youth sport partners is Asning AYSO Soccer. Their mission is to develop and deliver quality, player-centered youth soccer programs that promote a fun, fair, family environment where everyone is welcome and everyone plays. If you have a child between ages four and 18, Registration for Fall 2022, Spring 2023 season is open. To sign up or to volunteer as a coach or referee, go to AYSO201.org today. The more volunteers, the more children can enjoy the AYSO soccer experience. Go to AYSO201.org today for more information or to sign up. AYSO201.org. More soccer for more kids. And speaking of beware, the Mariners and Angels, they plain don't like each other. They made their last series as exciting as possible as a bench-clearing ball, bench clearing brawl broke out in their game on Saturday. During the melee, there were eight ejections. The league announced 12 suspensions. D, was this fight a big deal, little deal, or no deal at all? Right, and just so everybody knows, uh, Seattle's Jesse Winkler got pegged by pitcher Andrew Wentz. Uh, Winkler was hit as part of a retaliation for the Mariners throwing up and into Mike Trout the night before. I mean, to me, uh, this is just no deal. Like, fighting in all sports is just stupid. I think of sports as a job slash a business. You can't just start throwing punches at people just because things didn't go your way. Fighting should not be tolerated. I also think, you know, arguing with officials needs to go needs to go away. I'm tired of seeing people argue with umpires. Just play the game. Um, you got a problem with the guy? You upset he hit you? Meet him in the parking lot after the game. Have a conversation with him. Be an adult. Be an adult. You're going to go charge the dugout? He didn't even charge the pitcher's mound. He charged the dugout. And most of the and most of the time these player rumbles like nobody really actually throws a real punch everyone kind of hugs each other and falls to the ground it's it's actually kind of pathetic but yeah you're right there were eight ejections in the game and 12 suspensions handled out handed out uh coach phil nevin got 10 games um and just these are two like irrelevant teams it's just it's no deal phil nevin got off light Phil Nevin, he got off light. What, 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 what more can I say? Did he hit Mike Trout? Yes or no? No, he did not. No. The ball did, came up and in. It did not hit Mike Trout because if it hit Mike Trout, Mike Trout would be out for the season. So, Nevin took this, right? He filed it away. This was premeditated. He started this guy once specifically because he was an opener. He had no intention of letting this guy go a long, you know, a long time. His role was specific. Go out there and do what you need to do. That's premeditation. That kind of crap cannot last in Major League Baseball. And Phil Nevin should at least get 25 games. That's you know. Wow, I'm throwing say, the hammer down. I'm dropping but the he, hammer. I mean, he hit him in he hit him in the. I think he hit him in the bucks, the buttocks, or the thigh. It doesn't it's matter. It's not like he hit him in the hand or but, broke anything. But dude, I, did, is, I think somebody did get hurt in the melee. I think oh, one of the relief pitchers broke an elbow. Oh, we're gonna get we're gonna get to Archie Bradley later. <laughs> but <laughs> but you could have let it go. 
you, like you said, you could have let it go. But Phil Nevin decided that I'm going to hold on to this and I am going to get my pound of flesh. So you're trying to get this stuff out of baseball. Like, Phil Nevin, you need to stop with the ridiculous Cro-Magnon-like behavior. And Anthony Rendon, you're, you're a schmuck too. I, I, apparently this has devolved into a legend superstar of the week because Anthony Rendon is already hurt. He's out for the season. Why are you fighting? Why are you in the stadium? <laughs> what the hell Why are you, are you in doing? the building? Right. <laughs> You're getting into a fist fight? Is your wrist broken? He's got a cast. He's got a cast. Remember when Owen Hart had a cast on his wrist? That's exactly <laughs> what this is about. So this means you be clocking people with the wrist. Woo! Anthony Rendon's a nugget. What a, oh, God. Anthony Rendon. What do you think? Right? I, I just... You had I'm gonna get me some! <laughs> I'm gonna straight up murder your ass. I did not see that coming. But, the, <laughs> the, in my opinion, the Angels instigated... I mean, the, the Mariners instigated this, but the Angels went above and beyond what was necessary to finish it. And they, they came down heavier on the Angels as they should have. But I don't think it was enough. I really don't think it was enough. If you really want to get rid of this stuff, come down, come down hard. It's a big deal from the stance that, you know, now you have an injured player trying to fight somebody. You got a, you had a, a guy slip and fall and break his elbow. I hope they were playing like the circus music. It's, it's a fucking clown show. I wish, you know, like, we should get Joe back on to see what Joe thinks about this. Joe, you know, if, if you're out showed there. Showed more life than they've showed in weeks. They appear to be fighting each other. He's holding his left a little low. That can hurt him in later rounds. But, you know, you had the opportunity to be adults. You had opportunity to be professionals. And instead, you pulled this beer league crap. But and to me, that's all on the Angels. They could have let it go. And they just didn't do it. Avoid messy accidents. Get better stopping power with your brake pads. Callahan brake pads. You never know when you'll be driving in the road and there will be a truck tire that you need to avoid and save your family. Callahan Auto. We really care about what's under your hood. Bullshit or no shit, we're going to debate this week's most controversial sports topics right now. All right, boys and girls. We have a state. It's either bullshit or it's no shit. We'll see what you think. Bullshit or no shit, number one. This is the end of the Tampa Bay Lightning's dynasty and the beginning of the Colorado Avalanche's dynasty. Man, it sucked. You know, the the uh, Avalanche took out the Lightning in six games and they finished them off in Tampa. A uh, nice 2-1 victory. Uh, it just seemed like Tampa was done. I mean, it just seemed like, you know, they were getting pressured with every time they had the puck. Uh the Colorado, the Colorado Avalanche were all over them. I hate to say it, but it seemed like they wanted it more. Um, they were out for blood. I'm going to say no shit to half of it. I think the Lightning's reign is definitely over. I'm not sure if this is the start of a new dynasty for the Avalanche. Uh, but it's it's hard in hockey. And, you know, good teams. There are good teams sitting in the West. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 I felt, like I said, the Lightning were just pestered and pressed all series by the speed and talent of Colorado and Colorado wanted more I mean Colorado definitely had better jump in their, but that's also the rest factor right they had the sweep in the conference finals over Edmonton whereas the Rangers took it to Tampa Bay Tampa Bay had the sweep earlier of the Panthers so having to go through the Rangers to get to the Avalanche definitely took a toll, right? You hear the injury report now. McDonough was, McDonough was dealing with a foot injury. Uh, you had Braden Point. He had a leg injury. 
he, pl- he only played for two games. So Sorelli was hurt. You, you had a longer list as injuries mount and take their toll. That's hockey, right? That's, that, that's just how it goes. I'm going to go no shit. I think the Lightning will, you know, I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm calling bullshit. I'm going to go bullshit on this one because the Lightning will be back. This is not the year you need to worry about. As far as unrestricted free agents, right? Patrick Maroon, Andre Palat, Jan Ruda, and Brian Elliott, the backup goalie. That's it. Everybody else is either a restricted free agent or they're under contract. So they're essentially going to be able to bring this team back. They're going to be able to, if they believe in this team enough, maybe trade off some pieces and bring in some guys. But they can essentially bring this team back. Yes, you're going to go up against the Rangers. Yes, you're going to go up against the Panthers. The Penguins are going to be a problem because the Penguins are always a problem. But you're going to you're going to have those guys, right? You're going to have your core. If you're looking at Colorado, Burakovsky, unrestricted. Kadri, unrestricted. Nachuskin, unrestricted. Lekkinen, restricted. Obe Kubel, restricted. Helm is unrestricted. Sturm is unrestricted. Cogliano, Manson, Murray, Johnson, Kemper. Kemper, their starting goalie. All of these guys are unrestricted free agents. So this should be, there's going to be an overhaul, right? It's just, you know, you can't pay all these people for services rendered. So both of these teams are going to be good enough to get back. But I don't, I'm not going to start throwing out dynasty. I'm not throwing that word around anytime soon. Bullshit or no shit. Number two, the Cleveland Browns and the Baker May and Baker Mayfield are officially over. Yeah, no shit. I actually (laughs) want to see him. I actually do want to see him show up for camp and do drills with Watson. But the locker room would be a nightmare. Uh, I'm just curious to see how the league um how the league will you know respond once once uh Watson is suspended I'm going no shit as well I mean Baker's pretty much said it and you know the action of trading for Deshaun Watson and his repeated uh legal issues is an indicator of what the Browns think of Mr. Mayfield, even with the settlement of most of Watson's legal issues. The fact that Baker isn't there and they're kind of moving on as if he's not going to be there, that kind of shows you where they are. But, you know, we were talking about in the production meeting, nobody's trading anything for Baker Mayfield. Everybody's waiting for the inevitable cut. (laughs) Yeah. They're waiting for him to get cut. You're looking at a 29 and 30 record career. 61.6% 61.6% completion, 14,000 yards, 92 touchdowns, 56 picks. The only team that I can think would be willing to bring him in on a make good deal. Because I don't even think the Steelers would now. Because I think they're satisfied with Trubisky as their as their lead dog. Yeah, I think so too. If I'm the Giants. I'm waiting for the cut. Bring him in. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst? He pushes Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones is the guy, he'll welcome it. Because who'd he get before? He got Colt McCoy and he got Mike Glennon. Not exactly holding your feet to the fire, right, Daniel? So bring in a guy, former number one overall pick, a chip on his shoulder. It could be Kerry Collins all over again. Like Kerry Collins was dead in the water as a pro. And then he resurrected his career with the Giants. So, who's to say that Baker Mayfield doesn't have a similar arc in his story? But as of right now, that Cleveland Brown chapter is closed. Bullshit or no shit. Number three, Freddie Freeman will start a trend by representing himself in future negotiations. Nah, this is bullshit. I mean, nobody nobody put a gun to Freddie's head saying he had to sign with the Dodgers. This is all coming out because he was very emotional this weekend in his return to Atlanta. He got his ring, took a bunch of pictures, and realized he should have never left. I mean, this was something we we talked about last year on uh, DNZ. 
uh, fade route where it's just like, you know, this was the place where you should have stayed. You went to LA for more money, but this this was the better deal for you is to stay home, stay where you were loved and appreciated. You're on the Dodgers and that's great, but at the end of the day, they don't really need you. Like, you know, um, so I think at the end of the day, the agent works for you. If staying in Atlanta was important to you, Freddie, you would have stayed there. It wasn't, so I say bullshit. I'm calling bullshit as well. Six years, 162 million, solid. Like that's a good deal, right? Not the eight-year, 168 million dollar contract that Matt Olson got after the, you know, after the Braves traded for the Georgia native. So, you know. It's a little bit of sour grapes on Freddie's part. It's a little bit of, you know, revisionist history. Both sides were kind of done with each other. They knew that they were inevitably going to part. But I'm in full agreement with you that this is not going to start any trend because we've seen it before. Agents and players sometimes have an acrimonious relationship. Sometimes players will get talked into locations that they may not necessarily want to go to. No For example. He, uh, yeah, but he can't he can't really be mad. I mean, they got him a really good deal with a good team. It's not like he's playing for the Colorado Rockies. Like he's playing for the Dodgers. Like you're competing for a championship. Mike Hampton, thank you for proving my point for me. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like that's what the money's for. The, the money is... The, <laughs> that's, what, the, that's, that's what you got paid, Freddie. Right. You, you got paid to, you know, deal with the hurt feelings. But there are two pitchers, right, that you're quite familiar with. And they got talked into their contracts by their agent, who was Scott Boris. Derek Lowe, when he went to the Dodgers and the Red Sox, four years, you know, $36 million contract... Derek Lowe is not an L.A. guy. Derek Lowe admitted he was talked into the deal. And then Kevin Millwood at Texas. At what point, where, where did Kevin Millwood to Texas look like a good fit? If you look at Kevin Millwood, his worst years as a pro were in Texas. <laughs> his worst years as a pro. 48 and 46, over only two games over 500, and ERA... Almost a, almost a full run higher. I'm sorry. The agent works for you. So if you feel comfortable negotiating your deal, go for it. Absolutely. Gary Sheffield did it. You have plenty of guys out there. Or you just say so you just say something simple like, hey, I want to stay in Atlanta. Make it happen. Yeah. Get the best deal you can get for me to stay in Atlanta. He definitely wanted a better, he wanted more money. He wanted more years. He wanted to take care of it. Come on, just don't even come at me with that. It's not yeah. true at all. Yeah, but that's the thing. Matt Olson is five years younger than Freddie Freeman. That's why he got the eight-year deal. Right. You're, you're 32, bro. He's 27. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Are you in need of air care maintenance or service? I have the company for you. Air Care Technicians. They service the Westchester and Northern Bronx area and can help you with all your heating and cooling maintenance and service needs. Just give them a call at 914-315-1547. Again, that's 914-315-1547. Or shoot them an email at aircaretechnicians at gmail.com. These guys are the real deal as they are veteran-owned, licensed, and insured. Make sure to tell them that D&Z sent you. The Fade Store presents the Alleged Superstar of the Week Award. All right, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It is time for the Alleged Superstar of the Week. You know how it goes. We put up a poll on our Twitter page, at FadeRouteDNZ, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote, and you vote. The winner of said poll gets the coveted ass trophy and gets featured on this here segment. And do you know who took home the ass trophy last week, Dave? I don't. Roger Goodell. 
that Roger guy. Goodell, that guy. Oh, Roger. Roger, Roger, Roger. Remember. Remember, Roger. You can start some things. It's okay. But that was last week. This is this week. Who are your nominees, D? Well, up first, I got Anthony Rendon. Out the rest of the year due to a wrist injury, but was suspended five games to be served next year for his role in the rumble between the Mariners and the Angels over the weekend. What are you doing on the field with a broken wrist during a rumble, Rendon? Anthony Rendon, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Number two, Freddie Freeman. Not sure if I've ever seen a grown man cry so much on TV before. He fired his agent for helping him sign a six-year, $162 million contract with one of the best teams in baseball. Simply because he, he finally figured out that he should have stayed in Atlanta and he was happier in Atlanta. Freddie, if you wanted to stay in Atlanta, you should have stayed in Atlanta. Just Your agent works for you. Come on, man. You're smarter than that. And last but not least, my superstar of the week, the New York Yankee Bats. No hit by the Astros on Saturday. You're the best team in baseball, my ass. <laughs> no team in Major League Baseball history has ever gone on to win the World Series after being no hit. How do you like them, Apples? What do you got, Z? All very good choices. All very good and compelling options but you know we have a lot of we have a lot that we can go from right we've just from that one angels mariners game, right you got you, you phil mevin i can choose from, I, I think i made my case on phil mevin you made your case on anthony rendon archie bradley don't think i forgot about you archie bradley you didn't get like sucker punched you didn't get like he never he, even made it into the fight. No! It's like, he never, he didn't take like a baseball bat to the arm. No. He tried to get over the fence, and he tripped and fell. So, Archie, come on. Are you kidding me? If you're gonna get hurt, at least go out in a blaze of glory. Archie Bradley, you are my alleged superstar of the week. Major League Baseball. For allowing Fernando Tatis Jr.'s name to even be on the All-Star ballot. Oh. Fernando Tatis Jr. is fifth in All-Star voting. <laughs> yeah. How many games has Fernando Tatis Jr. played this year, D? I have uh, just as much as I have. Bingo! Zero. Zero. <laughs> but Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to get an invite to LA. Are you friggin' kidding me? Major League Baseball, you are my alleged superstar of the week. And the New York Knicks, for whatever the hell you were doing, right? <laughs> uh, you, you got three picks, and then you traded picks away, and then Kemba Walker's gone, and then now New Orleans Noel and Alan, Alec Burks are gone to the same team, but in different trades, and you have all this cap room now available, and you're going to sign Jalen Brunson. <laughs> That's your big move? <laughs> That's, That's your big play? <laughs> right. Exactly. Well... Uh, obviously, Taylor's thinking, I don't know what the hell he's thinking. So let me but, get this straight. The Clippers are going after John Wall, and we're going after Jalen Brunson. Got it. <laughs> right. Now, does, if they really, I mean, if they wanted to, they could have gotten DeJounte Murray, right? Three first-round picks and a, a shooter. You're telling me that there isn't a shooter on that team that you could pair with some picks? And then at least, you know, hey, Murray's coming off an all-star year, career year, a better year than Brunson. But, you know, uh, Knicks are going to Nick. Knicks will Nick. That's what they do. But New York Knicks, you are my alleged super, superstar of the week. And I think we've said our piece. Go to the Twitter poll and vote and vote and vote. And for our nominees. Just do better, boys. Just do better. Your favorite podcast has its own merch line now. Go to the Fade Store with DNZ.com today for all your Fade Route merch needs. I'm talking tank tops, t-shirts, sweatshirts, 
Like yoga pants? We got those too. Like some cool accessories? We got those too. And we're not done yet. We have so much more planned for you, but check out what we have today at the Fade Store with DNZ.com. That's the Fade Store with DNZ.com. It's the in route where friends of the show get a special segment with us. Want to be part of the action? Want to be the newest member of the in crowd? You know what to do. Hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com or slide in those DMs on Fade Route Podcast on IG or hit that Twitter, Fade Route DNZ. Joining us on the in route this evening is Regional Commissioner of Ossining AYSO Youth Soccer, ENL Teacher Extraordinaire, and NYC FC Super Supporter, Rita Sanchez. Hi, Rita. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll lead you off with our boys in blue, the reigning MLS champs, NYC FC. There's been a change at the top with Rennie Dyla leaving midseason to become the head coach of Belgium's Standard League, or Liege. Fair or foul for Dyla to leave a championship team for another job midseason? So I was just really starting to like him. Um, last <laughs> season, there was a lot of like, oh, Ronnie out, like hashtag on Twitter. Wow. Um, and then they the team really hit their stride. and then You were the one team. leading that charge, that whole Ronnie out? No, I, wa- oh, I wasn't, oh. but we were kind of like, everyone was kind of lukewarm about him. And then after they won, he did the whole the push-ups in his underwear, and everyone thought he was so charming. And then he, he like, left us high and dry right before the international break. And it was kind of, um, I think, a bit shocking to the team. And um, because I think he had really, like, he had the locker room. And then he left. And it's been, I I would say that it's foul for him. I don't exactly understand why he did it. Um, I mean, probably money, but um, not not too keen on it. Okay, it's fair. So, uh, Dyla's departure led to NYCFC to appoint Nick Cashing interim head coach. NYCFC is 0-1 and 2 in their first three games with the new coach, and they're playing FC Cincinnati tonight. What have you liked and disliked about Cashing's coaching style so far? Or Cushing? So, I think the... I'm not sure about his starting 11. Like, it seems like it really... It's that whole, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, it wasn't broke before uh, Dyla left. And he seems to be kind of experimenting a little bit, which, again, they were winning. There's no need to experiment. So um, he kind of is just like putting people together and on they lost on Sunday and he just like swapped out both fullbacks in the second half. Like he it was kind of like, oh, shit, my bad. Like, let me just put in like completely new people. Um, So I also am not completely sure that he has the locker room yet, given like the way um, Ronnie Dyla left. Um, and at times they just seemed a little bit lost, like, especially in the midfield, like they're just, it's kind of like when I coach my boys, like they get the ball and they don't know what to do with it. They know they have to do something, but they're a little, they're not quite sure what the plan is. Um, so I, I think if the jury is still out, um, right now they're playing and they were losing very badly and we're starting to make a comeback. I'm not jinxing anything. Um, and I don't believe that Cushing made any changes at the half. So we will see how today pans out. Yeah, he, he, he shares the, he both Cushing and Ronnie Dyla both share the hard on for Chris Gloucester. I don't understand that. Like, he's not a good player. Like, I, I just don't, they have Chavon Gray, they have Malte Amundsen. And Tell us how you really feel. He's not good. <laughs> He's not even he, he's not even good enough to be on NYCFC two, and he's getting a starting spot. We are very partial to some of them. I mean, Tavon Gray is from the Bronx, 
he's yes, one sir. of their homegrown players like he's went up through the system and you know I'm very happy to see him getting a shot and um, they have some other young players who are really like kind of rising to the occasion and I'm hoping that Cushing sticks with them yeah I mean apologize for messing up his name earlier but I mean Nick Cushing definitely has some experience he he coached the Man City women for what seven or eight years I mean that's got to say for something I think over time he'll get the group together it's early in the season I'm sure I'm sure they'll get things going uh surprisingly with the CONCACAF Champions League U.S. Open Cup tournaments and stoppage for national team play we're only at the halfway point of the MLS season what does NYCFC have to do tactically to stay at or near the top of the table the rest of the way through so they need more of an attack and they need like more fluency between the midfield and the strikers. Um, we have some great young Brazilian strikers, three, and um, they are, they're fast, they're ready. Um, they just need to kind of like move the ball and they were playing a lot out of the backfield for a while because they had um, some very experienced defenders. But now it's time to really, like, press. You've got these guys. They can beat the defenders. So why not kind of um, be a little bit more up-tempo? Um, the other thing that they need is health. Um, they're, one of our center backs has a high ankle sprain, so that's always kind of tricky to come yeah, back takes from. takes forever to come back. Yeah. yeah. Like a nagging. So we'll see what happens. And then today uh, we found out that Keaton Parks, um, one of our midfielders, um, is undergoing surgery for a blood clot, which is the second time this has happened. It happened in November. So definitely like sending him some good vibes. Um, I met him last year. Super nice guy. Super like important part of the team. And it, it's just like an awful injury and who know and it's like an indefinite timetable obviously because this is like a major health thing having nothing to do with soccer so mm-hmm. we need to replace him like we, someone needs to kind of step in and fulfill that role in the midfield um he's like six seven i think so he's got the height he can play a lot of defense and um we need someone to kind of take that place no definitely and um other than Captain America, other than, other than Sean Johnson, and other than the reigning Golden Boot winner Tati Castellanos, who are your X Factor players, and who needs to step up for NYCFC to be successful? So we just got back our Swedish fullback Anton Tinnerholm, who also just became a dad again. Congratulations to the Tinnerholm. Mazel tov. But um, now that he's back, he's back from an Achilles injury. Like he. Um, it made a big difference putting him in the game. So if he can kind of get back to his old form, that will be crucial for us. Um, more goal scoring from our um, Brazilian strikers um, and from Santi Rodriguez, just to kind of like spread it around because our golden boot winner, there's a very good chance that he will go to a European club soon. So we now need some other people to kind of um, step in and score. And the defense needs to be a little bit tighter. Um, Just from what I was watching earlier, they're a little bit out of sync. Um, I I mentioned our center back was injured. Our, the person that they put in for them, for him, Maxime Cheneau, suffered an eye injury um, where he basically almost lost vision in his eye. So he's wearing one of those like masks And to me, it looks like he's got like a blind spot or something, but their defense is definitely a little bit funky right now. So as we get to the end of the season, we need to just be a little tighter back there. Definitely. And, you know, definitely missing guys like James Sands and Jesus Medina and, uh, you know, the guys that they couldn't necessarily keep. You know, they're definitely missing some of the players that they had last season but going from the pros to the kiddos the spring 2022 AYSO season just ended recently and what a season it was I happened to be on the sidelines for a couple of games and it was it was nice to see it was nice to see 
the young men and women performing well and having fun. So as a coach and an administrator, what are your takeaways from this past season? So I will put on my administrator hat. Um, Families were very happy for the kids to be back on the field. I think now we went through a full spring and a full fall and people got to play on their team. So that was really great. Um, People are still kind of like getting comfortable with leaving the kids and going to the different towns. But by the end of the season, we had like a good cohesion. Um, For my team, uh, we had a great season. We only lost two games, which was nice. Uh, Actually all year, not all season. Um, And the kids are really like kind of developing and kind of filling in those gaps from um, COVID. Um, So I'm hoping we can just keep the momentum and uh, come back strong in the fall. Absolutely. And uh, we will get you here out of here on this one, Rita. Speaking of the fall, fall 2022 doesn't start until September. So what can players do over the summer to keep working on their craft in order to develop and improve their skills? So I think the secret, just like with anything else, is to do it like every day. So over quarantine, I had my son out on the sport court, like kicking goal kicks at me. Um, So any chance that the kids can get to, like, have a ball at their feet, um, they should do it. There are a lot of camps and, like, mini camps and stuff that kids can do. NYCFC has great youth camps all around, like, Westchester, Connecticut, and the city. Um, So that's definitely something that will help kind of keep the skills sharp. We are going to do, like, a Saturday morning, um, like, summer, summer Saturdays to keep the kids just again small sided game skills just to get them out there um, and make sure that we're kind of like not regressing at all in the fall so that's our plan I mean it's a solid plan right because you're it's all about development at AYSO and that's one of the reasons why we are proud to be a friend of Austin AYSO and Rita Sanchez, Regional Commissioner of Austin AYSO, ENL teacher extraordinaire, NYCFC super fan. Thank you so much for joining us on the in route this evening. And if you want to be part of the in route, hit us up, faderoutemail at gmail.com, slide in those DMs at Fade Route Podcast on IG, or hit us up on Twitter at Fade Route DNZ. You could be on the in route, you could be part of the in crowd. All you got to do is reach out. Rita Sanchez, thank you so much, and I look forward to speaking with you again. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Absolutely, Rita. Take care. Thanks. This has been The Fade Route with D&Z. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Catch our podcast on Wednesday nights on Anchor, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and wherever you listen to your podcast. Until next time, stay faded, everyone. Time for us to run the go route, but we'll talk to you next week. want to get on the action we want to hear from you hit us up fade route mail at gmail.com slide in our dms on ig at fade route podcast drop us a dm on twitter at fade route dnz comment on our youtube channel the fade route with dnz questions comments picks segment suggestions you name it we want to hear from you get at us in crowd